is called Tor the Ember Walker. <laughs> Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person who was lucky enough to be sent this. It is a D&D character, not just any D&D character mind you, but my actual D&D character from Live and Let's Dice. My friend Gimli sent this over, and my friend Lawson painted. How lovely is that? Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week, which kind of implies that I'm choosing this list, but I'm not. It's actually Mr. K today, who is possibly a relative of Professor K from Jet Set Radio Future, but I digress on that, and their suggestion of video games that had different features or bonuses depending on which version that you played them on. So I thought I'd take this a step further and go for video game features that you never got to play mainly just because it tracks better on YouTube, but to try and explain a little bit what I'm going for here, region lot content, it kinda sucks. Sometimes the Japanese like markets will get stuff that we don't get and vice versa, and it can be absolutely terrible to be locked out of content that you're just like, well I bought the game on the original version, why do I not get all these tasty good treats? Even worse is when they port them between consoles and you're just left thinking, I supported this, I got you off the bloody ground mate, why are you giving them fresh apples when I've only got rinds and cores? I've just eaten an apple for breakfast, so it's on the brain a little bit. But anyway, I digress. Let's get on with the list today. And you know the drill by now. Say hi to me here in the live chat, and also put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. <laughs> with this in mind, I'm Jules. This is WhatCulture.com, and these are seven secret video game bonus features that you never got to play. <laughs> oh yeah, also Lawson sent me this uh, as my name on the package that it came from, so... um. Guess I'll be wearing that today. Just I always want everyone to know my uh, penile problems. Number seven, the entire plot, Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere. Now it might be a little bit cheeky to start this list off by saying the entire plot is a bonus feature, but trust me, only the Japanese market actually got to understand what the chuff was going on with Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere. <laughs> Simply put, in the original version, which contains a whopping 52 levels, each with branching plot lines, the game ties together your choices and performances with nifty little anime cutscenes. And as you craft your own tale of aerial dominance, you'll grow to love your team and maybe even respect your dastardly enemies. Or at least that's true of the Japanese version. For you see, in a moment, that must have been the result of a very large bang on the head with a big blunt object, the developers decided to take all of these cutscenes and take them out of the game. <laughs> So, in the international release, we had no idea what was going on, because it still had the same gameplay features of a branching narrative, but it had only one plot thread going all the way through, meaning that your actions would not line up with what they were telling you you just did. It was utterly baffling and really, really terrible. So I definitely would consider here to, that an actual full working narrative is a bonus feature that we never got to play. <laughs> Number 6. Ruby, Emerald, and Diamond Boss Battles Final Fantasy VII The PAL Version Are there any bosses in Final Fantasy history more iconic than the trio of weapons Diamond, Emerald, and Ruby from Final Fantasy VII? Well, maybe the absolute king of banter that is King Cactuar, but I digress a little bit. The weapons hit the scene and quickly made a name for themselves as some of the most challenging fights that you could come across, with Ruby Weapon especially being a bane for many players the world over for years. Still, if you were a Japanese Final Fantasy fan, you'd likely have no bloody clue what people were on about as these three boss battles were exclusively added to the international release of the game. In a strange twist that usually sees Japanese games become easier for Western audiences, things had gotten much much harder here. And it wasn't just the two optional super boss battles and the story included diamond boss battle that we got here. We actually got a ton of tweaks as well that made the game easier in some areas and much harder in others. For example, new stats were added in for enemies, they had their immunities buffed and changed, there were new item drops that you could get. But most importantly of all, we actually had our encounter rates, the random little encounters that you'd get, halved from the Japanese version. That alone would make me want to import it as a Japanese player. My god, what a slog that must have been to get through. Number 5. Play as Dante, Beautiful Joe on the PS2 
When you think of titles that have more balls to the wall, over the top action spectacle pieces, you probably are thinking of a Platinum Games or at least a Clover Studios title because these guys and gals, they, whew, they made such mind blowing experiences that I'm surprised that I've got the wherewithal to talk about them now. Anyway, amongst their absolutely astounding lineup are the likes of the wonderful 101, God Hand Vanquish, and of course, Beautiful Joe, which saw them partner up with other the mad lads of the scene Capcom to create one of the most visually impressive and retina-scorching experiences on the GameCube. In fact, Beautiful Joe is so good that I'm going to ask a little bit of a favour from the boy upstairs. Uh, slime Jesus! Slime Jesus! Okay, right here he is. Cool, yeah. It was going to get weird if I had to keep calling him there. Dude, have you already given your blessing to Platinum Games and Clover Studios? Oh, you have? Oh, what a ledge. See, this is why he get pays to, gets paid the big bucks up in the heaven dollar store. Right, oh, he's back. He's, got, he's gone. He didn't even f wait for me to finish talking. Cool. See you later, mate. Anyway, Beautiful Joe's combination of luscious, cell shaded graphics and time manipulation combat earned it praise across the board and allowed GameCube owners to be smugger than they had, well, any right to be. However, with such attention and success, it made practical business sense for the company to port their title over to other consoles, namely the PS2 and its massive install base. The port was, of course, an absolute smash hit, but what acted like an extra jab to the plums of GameCube owners was the fact that they actually got an unlockable bonus camp character in the form of Dante from Devil May Cry. That's right, if you complete the game once, you'll be able to unlock this silver-haired, silver-tongued, absolute assassination kick-ass monstrosity that is Dante for play. And he even came with his own reworked cutscenes, which now saw him and Trish now trying to battle the big bad, and it had like other bits as well, just saying like, oh yeah, you're from Devil May Cry, oh, nice little nod there. I was just like, this is the bonus that keeps on giving. And then I laughed at my friend who had a GameCube and had actually showed me this game. I was like, can you do this on yours? And he's like, no, I can't. I was like, <laughs> I wasn't a very good friend. Number four, London Life, Professor Layton and The Last Spectre. <sighs> now this one just stings. The Professor Layton titles are some of the most fun and devious little puzzle games that you can find on Nintendo's handheld consoles, and alongside its gorgeous graphical style, it also manages to weave complex and engaging mysteries, so of course fans of the series almost lost their top hats when it was announced that Professor Layton and The Last Spectre would feature a brand new bonus minigame that boasted over 100 hours of extra playtime. Naturally, pre-orders for the game were about as high as interest levels for this London Life add-on, which saw players able to create their own character and live out a peaceful existence in an 8-bit version of the Layton verse complete with all of your favourite heroes and villains. Mini mini games, customization, and an ever chipper soundtrack? What's not to love? Sign me up! Well, as it turns out, in a massive dose of irony, Little London wouldn't actually be accessible for UK owners of the game, as this feature that was a bonus unlockable in Japan and a ready-to-access mode for the US were completely absent from our version. And trust me, life on the real London streets is much, much less fun. The people are just so angry all the time. Sad times. But you know what? Let's cheer ourselves up by having a musical interlude, my friends, because today, in honor of Professor Layson and the English tradition of the West End, we're going to be doing a musical. So, Osley, are you ready, my friend? Who the hell's Professor Layson? James, hope you're warming up your vocal pipes, my boy. My boy. My boy. I really like Professor Layton, Jules, so don't you dare ruin this for me. What have you been up to this week, James? Oh, thanks for asking, Jules. Me and Jazz went on a nice little walk. Don't care. Come on, music man. Make with the slappy bassy. <laughs> Pass me the bass, Jazz. Oh, Professor Layton, I want to come with you to take part in your London life. Nah, you're not coming in. Get in your bin. You're a big limey twat as big as my head. Why, Professor Layton, do you hurt me so? I just wanted to play. Fuck off, you lesion. You're in the wrong region. This is for the States. My actual mates. US means us. Now get on your bus. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Number three, unlock Little Mac. EA Fight Night Round 2 on the GameCube. 
So the EA Fight Night series is one that needs to return. I, I think that goes without saying, right? I mean, EA is leaving huge money on the table by focusing on the UFC games and not on this pugilistic fighter that we all remember fondly. While Fight Night Round 3 might well be seen as the firm fan favourite, Round 2 definitely wasn't pulling any punches, and alongside some slick-looking visuals and an always hilarious shaky cam knockout system, it was also hiding some body-blowing content under its belt. I'm speaking, of course, about the Nintendo-exclusive unlockable fighter, Little Mac. Now, I was genuinely shocked to learn that you could unlock this pint-sized slugger by completing a special circuit exclusive to the GameCube, but the real reason that I'm including him here is because look how utterly horrifying he is! Seriously, there are tons of console-exclusive fighters that I could have chosen for this list, but how could I not after witnessing this abomination? He looks like a baby that's been fed steroids and then had the absolute piss kicked out of him. What is going on here? He's not even little, by the way. He's Big Mac now, and he's serving you up some hefty chips. He's not going to chip off your shoulder, chip off the block, mate. I don't like him. I like fighting him, but only to knock him out because he's just like, ah, oh, get away. Ooh. Ooh. Number two, play as Nori Maro, Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. So when it comes to video game fighters that should probably definitely not be taping up their fists to take on the likes of Paul Phoenix or Ken from Street Fighter, you probably think of Dan, maybe Phoenix Wright, uh, Roll, I mean, bless her, she tries, but God, it's like kicking the piss out of a toddler. However, there's actually a new king of crap that makes all of these other wimps look like utter winners, and that's Norimaro, a joke character created by Capcom and Japanese comedian Noritaki Kanashi. Looking like a used tissue stuffed into a school uniform, Norimaru was unlocked in the Japanese version of Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, but was nowhere to be seen in the international release despite still being on the disc. Yet the most hilarious thing about this joke fighter is actually that he's... Well, pretty decent. I know it seems really weird seeing as his fighting style, if you can call it that, is him just lobbing stuff at you for days. But at the same time, this, plus the fact that he's got a pretty decent aerial launcher, means that you can juggle opponents for hours. So strangely, the last laugh is one that he's having. Also, his story mode ending is actually quite scary because he becomes a tyrannical dictator. Yeah, he's a, he's a weird character for sure. But weirder still is that there's actually no reason that he should have been cut. I mean, after all, is a school kid with the face of Mr. Bean any weirder than an anthropomorphic cactus plant or a time-traveling pirate? Well, not really, in my opinion, so it was a bit of a shame to find out that this was a Japanese-exclusive unlock. And number one, the dating sim in rival schools, united by fate. And so we end on another fighting game, but this one here isn't about unlockable content that would let you better batter your opponent into the ground like fleshy tent pegs, but no, this was a feature that was cut that may have taught us to love. I'm speaking, of course, about the absolutely brilliant rival schools united by fate, and the fact that in Japan it came with a dating sim mode. Now, Japan absolutely loves themselves a good dating sim, but it was still quite shocking to see a game like Rival Schools, which basically settled all disputes the way that nature intended, aka fist fighting on the playground, was going to let you dust off your opponents afterwards and take them for a drink. This mode lets you create a brand new character and then strengthen bonds with other classmates, which would, in turn, affect your stats, basically teaching kids that having a lot of mates will give you the strength to take on anything that life can throw at you. Pretty nice, right? Well, well, unfortunately, we didn't get this second disc that came with the game in the international release, so we just had to settle for a really well-made fighting game. God, hardly worth the plastic case. I'm kidding, it was brilliant. And there we go, my friends. Those were seven secret video game features and bonus contents and modes that we never got to play. Ugh, oh, curse the heavens. Damn you, Beelzeblob. This is all your fault, mate. Ugh. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as your suggestions for next week's episode, because I'd love to see them, my friends. But if you want to chat to me further, in the meantime, you can do so by going over to Twitter and typing in at RetroJ with a zero, and you will find this bold, beautiful egg right here. Or you can go to Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal game channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday and it would be great to see you over there. But before I go my friends, I just want to say one thing and that is a bonus feature that we can all unlock and that is just by simply being kind to ourselves. At this time of recording, at the beginning of 2021, it's still eh, going to be an interesting year. Put it, put it bluntly, the days are still short, the nights are still long, it is cold as balls and the world pretty much seems to be on fire ironically, but still 
I hope that you are taking time out of your day to be kind to yourself, because while all of this is going on, it doesn't mean that this is your burden to bear alone. Remember, friends, family, professionals in the support industry, these people care about you and want you to do well. So if you are feeling the weight of the world, then you're not alone and you can speak to other people about your problems. Trust me, it might help you live a healthier and happier life in the long run. So I really urge that you do that. Big love from me to you, you massive ledge. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you next week, all right? Take care of yourself. Bye.